So when I first arrived in the UK, I remember it was, um, you know, completely white. It was a bright, sunny day and getting off the plane, um, I just remember being at the top of the stairs and um, and just seeing white and the light was just incredible. It was so crisp and I, I just absolutely, I mean it was so exciting but also really scary, um, you know, coming to a country that I don't know much about, um, I've never been before and to, you know, to move here with my siblings, we were, we were really nervous but also really excited and growing up in St Albans um, was challenging. Um, I mean, I had a lot of kind of freedom growing up in Bangladesh. There was a lot of open space. I could go wherever I wanted, take the boat out whenever I wanted, you know, to go fishing. And we were surrounded by rice field and water. It was very lush and green and, um, and warm. And so I remember kind of really missing um, Bangladesh and so when I first started at Bernard Heath um, which is the primary school I used to draw a lot I used to do a lot of painting a lot of drawing and everything I did went up on the wall I couldn't understand it um, and for me it was kind of really strange because I didn't even know that I had, that I could draw and it was a way of communicating so I was drawing a lot of my family or where I grew up and, and it became, art became a way for me to communicate um, and I remember my teachers there just being incredible, incredibly supportive of that and it kind of went on to secondary school when I went to St Albans Girls School and I had amazing, amazing art teachers, um, Mrs Morley and Mrs Ensley. They were, I mean, you know, I used to come home with extra um, homework for art. That's how much I, um, I spent all my spare time. I spent um, any, any time, I mean, I just had so many sketchbooks of drawings that I did and things that I was kind of given to explore and look at. Um, so yeah, St Albans has a mixture of kind of feeling for me because it reminds me of when I first came to the UK, it reminds me of the challenges that I had. Um, I was bullied a lot at school, I'd be surprised to hear, but I think that kind of probably toughened me up a little bit. For me, it's a mixture of feelings um, with St Albans, and my family is still here, so I still come back, you know, I come and see them regularly, and it's really wonderful to kind of see how it's changing and how open it's become as well. I absolutely loved my time at Hertfordshire University. I think it was incredibly eye-opening. I was in awe of all the possibilities that the art world had. Um, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to go into design, I wanted to go into textile, I wanted to go into printmaking. I wanted to go into sculpture, I wanted to go into architecture, I mean there was just so many possibilities and the foundation course was just amazing there when I was doing it and I made amazing friends there as well and um, yeah it was, I mean it was a challenge trying to get my parents to um, let me um, study further, especially because you know art isn't the first thing that they would pick and isn't something that anyone could say that you could earn a living from either so my parents as much as they wanted to support they were nervous about 
whether it is something that would be good for me. Um, so yeah. During my foundation course, um, when I was doing sculpture with um, John Fuller and um, Jenny Alrich, and they were amazing. Um, John one time took me to the library and got these books out and the books were of Donald Judge, Sol Lewis, Agnes Martin and a lot of the structurist artists like um, Charles Biederman and um, I, I was really excited when I saw their work. I, was, I felt this amazing connection and I wanted to understand more, I wanted to find a way to really push my work more and more kind of abstract and at the time I was doing a lot of kind of figurative work, I was really struggling um, with the figure, with the body and so when I looked at um, these artists that he was showing me, I was really excited, I went then went back to the studio, looked at my work and I made a long list of things that I was interested and excited by and, um, and this list included things like colour, form, light, um, repetition, geometry, um, symmetry, surface, you know, line, um, so all of these things and I knew that I wouldn't be able to explore all of that in one go and so my research actually started kind of the end of my foundation where I split that research into two and I started looking at light and form so I spent um, my degree and my first year of MA exploring light and form and how light would affect the surface, the form um, and within that I was also looking at symmetry, I was looking at repetition, I was looking at the idea of the infinite. Um, and then I think it was in the, um, my second year of MA that I was ready to explore colour. And I feel like come from um, a culture that's kind of very vibrant, very colourful and I'd like to say we're quite loud and very... Um, I don't know, very positive and so you'd think that I would be confident about colour. Um, I grew up wearing a lot of beautiful um, coloured saris and saloir kameez. I grew up watching a lot of Bollywood movies but I, my confidence went the minute I was exploring with colour and paint. Every time I mixed paint up, it, the colours would always end up being really muddy and murky. And so I had to just let go of colour. And so when I came, when it was time for me to look at colour, I knew that paint wouldn't be the most obvious way to understand colour. And I, again, I couldn't go down the theoretical route. I went down a practical route because um, I'm dyslexic and so the theoretical route just became more and more difficult and I felt that it, I, it needed to be practical, it needed to be something that I work with my hands on. And so I realised I had a massive collection of adhesive tape that I could potentially use to understand colour and even like the thinnest strip of colour would, um, would affect how the entire work looked and I got really excited I thought this is really interesting this is so fascinating that you know the mood of a work can change depending on the way um, the amount of colour certain colour is used and so I spent I think I would say three or four years just solely looking at colour and then after that second kind of research period, I was ready to bring those two kind of things together. And I feel since then it's been quite explosive. Since then, I've, the work has gone um, 
you know, on various different direction, but they always kind of come back, they always come back to the core elements, which is light, colour and form. And those three things really, um, really make that work.